In this video, I just want to talk to you briefly about electrical transformers. Electrical transformers, they come in different shapes and sizes. Here is one. Here is another. And if we were to load up a different style, this would be a slightly different one because whereas before we were looking at a transformer that is full of insulating liquid, this one here isn't. This one is actually a dry transformer looks like so. Imagine taking this, putting it in a tank and then submerging it in oil or insulated liquid. And that's essentially what we have with the other types of transformer. So if you look at this one here and then we compare it to say this one over here, you can see the shape inside there. And same again, if we were to take a cross section, you can see pretty much the dry transformer, this one inside this tank. So keep that in mind, they, they come in different shapes and sizes, but generally they are this kind of shape. It really does depend on the design, but 90% of the time they're going to have this shape. There's two different main types of transformer design. This is the one you're going to be most familiar with. So why, I guess, do we need transformers in the first place? Which is a good question. Electrical transformers are used not just in microcircuitry or in electrical circuits, they're used outside power stations. They're used for distribution, transmission, and for cleaning up electrical signals as well. So transformers increase or decrease voltage, and sometimes they're used for cleaning up electrical signals. You don't increase or decrease the voltage. You just pass it through the transformer, and it cleans the signal as we transfer the voltage signal from one winding to another. Before we have a look at this electrical transformer and look at all of its parts, let's briefly discuss why we might need it. In the power industry, you need electrical transformers to reduce power losses. You get power losses because when you transmit electrical power from a power station, as you can see in this image, here's our power transformer, here's the power station. We're going to increase the voltage, send it into the grid. Then for a transmission transformer, we might increase it again. And then when we get to our distribution substation, we're going to decrease the voltage. So we may have, as an example, 20,000 volts where the power transformer is. Then we go up to 110. Then we go up to 220. And then we come back down again. And then we distribute. Really speaking, this type of transmission tower, type B, is going to be what's used for the high, very high voltage transmission. This type over here, where we're using wood, not so much. That would generally be used for lower voltages. Now, as I mentioned, transformers are used to increase and decrease voltage. Within this grid, we're going to increase the voltage because if we do, we reduce the current, and current is what causes our power losses. It's the biggest factor that determines our power losses. If we can reduce the amount of current, then we're going to reduce our power losses. So in order to reduce the current, we increase the voltage. Remember that voltage equals current times resistance. That's V equals I times R. So if voltage increases, current decreases, or resistance decreases, depending on what sort of equation you're looking at. But for practical purposes, if voltage increases, current decreases, and thus our power losses decrease as well. That's why we have electrical transformers, because we need to increase that voltage to reduce our losses across the grid. Not only that, when we increase the voltage, it means the size of the conductor we can use is a lot smaller. Current requires a conductor to flow through. We can see a good example of that here. The low voltage side is this thick conductor. As you can see, this big thick plate, that's going to be the low voltage side. That's going to be the side that carries a larger current. So lower voltage, higher current. Over here, this one has a smaller conductor. That's where my mouse is. So we've got a higher voltage and a lower current. The thing that dictates the amount of insulation that you're going to use within electrical circuit is the voltage. The thing that dictates the size of the conductor is the current. So over here, big giveaway, massive electrical plates for dealing with high current, low voltage. And if you've ever worked on batteries, maybe car batteries and things like that, you'll notice that the conductor is also quite chunky. You have these big thick brackets, similar to what you can see here, and they clamp onto the battery. And that's because they have to carry a lot of current 
at low voltage, typically 12 or 24 volts, in order to get your engine in your car or your truck or your van, your lorry, whatever, to start. It would not be suitable to have something like this, a small conductor, because then when the current flows through it, the conductor will get hot. Current causes friction within a conductor, and friction causes heat. And that heat, if it was flowing through here, the conductor was too small, would cause the conductor to melt. So a big giveaway, whenever you're looking at an electrical circuit, have a look at the insulation, like this here. If, if it's got this Christmas tree shape that you can see here, it means we're insulating against high voltage. Also, you can see from the insulating material that we need to have insulation on this side, whereas over here, you can also see we don't need the Christmas tree shape. We don't need to increase our creepage path or our voltage path to the tank because the voltage is quite low. So that's a giveaway that we're dealing with a lower voltage over here and a higher voltage over here where my mouse is. Now that we know why we've got transformers and what we're using them for, in the next video, I'll walk you through all of the components that the transformer has installed, such as these bushings over here, the electrical windings over here, the core or laminate steel core in the center of the screen now, the tank, Buchholz relay, temperature sensor, explosion relief valve, tank level monitoring, and many other things. See you in the next video.